Hello everyone and welcome to C.L. Aldridge Art where we do go on coloring adventures. Today we are going to be coloring this beautiful image from my book Flowers and Flyers. This book is on sale at Amazon in print or in my Etsy shop as a PDF. In this book I uh, released this in 2017 I believe and um, it actually I, it may have been 2016 and it is full of birds and and we have been coloring in this with ink tents. Uh, I should say birds, owls, butterflies, pretty much anything that flies. If you love to color and are just learning like I am, then please stay tuned and we'll get started. Before we get started, I do want to show you the very first thing I ever colored using ink tints. And I did not know what I was doing and used a fair amount of glitter gel pen to cover up my mistakes. I put stars in the sky. The outside frame actually is done with markers, but I thought you'd enjoy seeing that. I am using inexpensive water brush. I've got my swatch book and my paper towel at hand as always. And rather than use my pencils in the tin, I go ahead and save what I'm using and put it in a glass jar so I can continue a picture without having to dig around in that uh, metal case. I will be zooming down in a little bit, but but I wanted to give you a greater overview of this. We are in the middle of coloring the hydrangea. Hydrangea, of course, come in a variety of colors. The ones that I have chosen are the blue variety. So the pencils that I have in my hand are the iris and the apple green from the ink tent set. If you are unfamiliar with ink tents, they are ink based pencils. So once you activate them with water, they do form a permanent ink on the page. For a little bit, as you get them wet, they are fully blendable. And so that is what I am setting up to do here. I am actually circling the outside of each of the petals with the iris. And then I'll I'll put a very light brushing of the apple green. If you look a little bit at the petals to the sort of dead center but on the outside uh, top of that particular flower, you'll see that I was a little heavy with the green on that and so I did correct that as I was you know doing the rest of the petals and that is something that we learn as we go along. When you're applying your coloring technique to a new item that you're coloring you learn that your tools do behave different. Now I am very comfortable with ink tents. They are my go-to art medium so I'm going to show you that we can wetting the outside I will brush over the green. So I'm about to do that and and that blends the edges of that blue green and it gives each individual petal a glow. Now, I love the way that this hydrangea has turned out. It is a process. It is a process of learning your tools. So if you have ink tents and have been hesitant to use them, please do. Now, this is standard CreateSpace Amazon paper. I have taken the precaution of putting a plastic sheet behind as a page protector to protect the page underneath. But otherwise, they do not bleed through on this paper and uh, they do shadow uh, the other side, but all of my books are single-sided pages, so you never need to worry about bleed-through as long as you protected the page underneath, no matter what. Uh, a water brush, by its very nature, is very light and very light in its distribution of water, so I do not have a pilling problem with my paper at all. All right, so now I've got the yellow, and i have that's the sun yellow, and I'm doing just just the little dots uh, to represent the center of the flowers. And I will show you that there is another way to get the ink off of the ink tense pencil, and that is directly with the water brush. So you can just load up your water brush and then do your dotting that way for those tiny spaces. You can also use it this way to paint larger spaces. It does, I find, helps me blend out the intensity of the color because it is slightly diluted with water. Likewise, it can also make the intensity of your color greater. 
dependent upon how much you are putting down. Now I am looking for the Payne's Gray, and I want the Payne's Gray because it has a blue cast. Of the grays, it is a blue gray, it's dark blue gray, and I want to add a little contrast. If you have this image, you'll see that there are little striped spaces that are inked in that represent the interior of the flower. They are intended to be the dark space. I've noticed that my pencil needs a sharpen, so I am using the m &R blade. For a long time, I did not like to sharpen my ink tints because I thought it was wasting the pigment, but I've been assured by people who have had ink tints pencils, uh, the same set for 20 years, that uh, pretty much you can expect to have it only be a one-time lifetime investment. They do last a very, very long time, and they don't take an awful lot of pigment to deliver an awful lot of bang for your buck. For me, ink tents is very much like magic. Uh, they are made by Derwent out of Great Britain, and they are an absolutely fantastic product. I really love coloring with these. So as you can see, I've opened up that bloom by adding a little contrast and making it appear a little more natural, like there are in fact bases that you can see into. And as I notice each of the little tiny petal areas that I may have missed, I'm catching those. So I do hope that you've enjoyed watching that part of it. I'll be right back and we'll do a leaf. Okay, and welcome back. Now I'm going to do this leaf. I'm using the Ionian Green, which is one of my go-to dark greens. I'm also using the Spring Green, and I am adding just a bit of dark down the center spine and along each of the edges under the shadow or under the bloom where the darkest parts would be, and just pretty much color mapping where I want to show the highlight the lightest part of the leaf and the darker parts. So now I'm mixing in this spring green uh, right over the darker green and leaving the outer edges uh, or making the outer edges a little bit darker. so that you can see a little better as I apply the water. I start at the back edge with the darker areas first. That way I can blend the lighter areas in. And see, I'm leaving that sort of center area to last. That is to preserve the lightness in that area. Coming down the spine with the dark, wipe off, then go back in under the leaf and proceed and do exactly the same thing to the other side. Now, I should mention that the leaves below, the two that were previously done, do have more than one layer on them. So I will come back as this dries if I notice any splotchiness or any areas that need additional color. I will go ahead and add those. I am going to add just a little bit of apple green directly off the brush. This is a change up from the way I did the other one, but I want this one to be able to catch a little bit more light uh, from the sun. So imagine that there is an imaginary sun up in the sky and it is going to make that area just a little bit lighter. do this one exactly the same way, except I'm going to leave it just a little bit lighter because it would be up toward the sun and therefore would be the lightest green in the family. And I, you achieve that by just simply using a lighter touch with the Inktense pencil. And I love the way that the leaves turn out. I think the Ionian green and the uh, spring green are a great choice for leaves. They are the yellow greens in the set as opposed to the blue greens. You know, when you mix yellow and blue to make green, you can go a little heavier on one side or the other. So if it's got more blue in it, it's a bluey green. If it's got a more yellow in it, it's a yellow green. You will see them all mixed up in nature when you look at the different types of plants. Uh, you'll see, if you study a picture, you'll see all sorts of colors in there, including browns, ochres, yellows, 
For our purposes today, we are just going to stick with the greens, although you could get as multicolored as you want. But it's spring, and so these are all a beautiful spring green. like that we've done our leaves i'll go ahead and do the rest of the leaves and we'll be right back welcome back see how i picked up my little helper coriander i do have in my hand the cherry and the sun yellow uh thank you to whoever that was that just made a purchase in my etsy shop always a nice sound to hear and i am coloring the gladiola and i started out by putting the cherry of course down near the base of the petal now i'm using the sun yellow as i'm coloring these i'm trying to decide where would the light be hitting it where is the light coming from this is a, a page that we actually started in one of my sunday live streams if you are new to my channel and have not yet been to a Sunday live stream, please do stop by. I'd love to see you there. And we do sit and color and chat and I visit with people and it's, it's a lot of fun. And we laugh a lot. As I'm coloring this, I'm trying to decide where the light is hitting it. And, and that tells me where to put my shadows, my darkest shades, and where to make it lighter. So in my imaginary world, the sun is always coming from right about where the cat's face is. And so she, uh, she's my little sunshine. That's what she is. She's actually a lot of fun. And what a channel asset. She knows when the camera is rolling and she does especially cute things uh, when it is. So I do apologize for the distraction, but it's one of those sorry, not sorry kind of things because she's adorable and I love her. So back to these flowers. I will zoom down here shortly and show you a little closer what it is that I'm doing. But the overview, of course, is just to put your darker down near the base if that is the area that you Believe to be in the shadow and your lighter shades up near where the light would be hitting it. That's just a basic principle of coloring of any kind. And like I say, I am learning along with all of you. I do study a lot of photographs. Of course, since I do draw, I have to draw the shape and the structure. But when it comes to the actual appearance, the light and the dark, I am learning just like all of you. can roll down and we will get the water brush. Uh, well, I've noticed that there is a darker space that needs to be filled in underneath that leaf, so or underneath that paddle. One thing I should mention is, is that the cat did put a claw through my favorite water brush. It's either a claw or a tooth, I'm not sure which. And so I am using my second favorite and I am not fond of the way the water flows out of this one. So it's a little frustrating as I'm learning it's a little foibles its ins and outs and how best to make it work for me and not against me but that is true of any tool that we pick up to color with we just have to learn its particular properties and every single one is different just as different pigments in a colored pencil set can result in a different softness of the core or a different softness of the lead and graphite pencils are the same way so our water brushes each one behaves a little differently than the others. So now the cat has decided that she wants to help a little bit. <laughs> What you can't see is that she's got a hold of my arm with her paws. And I think I'm about to show you that. <laughs> 
head. You see where her claws are. And you wonder why I have injuries on my wrists and on my hands. I do bruise fairly easily, but oftentimes I am playing with the cat and those claws. But she is a very good little helper. And and she's, she's really pushing it right now, trying to help. I will be giving up the fight here in just a second. I will pause the camera. It'll look seamless to you. But that goes on for quite some time. she's resting again but I did pause the camera for about 10 minutes we had our playtime that's enough also the thing that you can't see is is I'm about to be holding her paw off camera as she tries it one more time <laughs> to this second color and this time I have the carmine pink and the tangerine or the crimson and the tangerine I think it's the carmine pink it's one or the other same process only this one will be a little bit darker since it is down further in the shadows I would like to shout out the absolutely marvelous channel known as zucchini kitty I was watching a video on her channel just today and and she is such a brilliant colorist. She was demonstrating how she put a sun ray in a picture that she is coloring. And it's a process with cutting up post-it notes and gluing everything down, covering it up before she puts her ink on. Uh, it's wonderful. I can really recommend that channel to all of you out there in YouTube land. Be sure to check her out. That's Zucchini Kitty. All one word or two words. Could be one word. I think it's one word. start on the stem and I have in my hand the starting out I'm doing the blossoms and these are of course the buds that have not yet bloomed so I'm just using the same colors that I used down below in the body of the gladiola to color these in just adding a little bit of a line I don't want them to be really brilliantly colored I just want them to be a hint of the shade that they're going to be I am pointing out of course that I I have not yet done some of the blossoms and so now I'm going to do the stem and I want the burn green and the light olive green for this so those are the two pencils that I have in my hand and I'm going to start out with a light layer of the fern green all over the stem and the leaves that go to this gladiola. Now a gladiola typically has yellow green stem and leaves. Those are the shades that I'm going to stick with. Uh, just like nature, I can't improve on her. So I'm just once again adding that light shade everywhere. Then I'll come back in with the light olive to do the shading. I am going to shade down one side, the side that would be away from the sun, also where the shadows would be underneath, underneath petals, things like that. is a bud that I've missed, a slightly more open bud. So I'm going to catch that, even though I haven't got the blossom or the bloom right beneath it yet. I will get that as I do the coloring off screen, but I did want to show you how I did this particular leaf. So you can see what I mean about light and shadow and where it would be, even though it's down near the bottom, the bottom would be darker because of course it's being more shadowed by the hydrangea. 
strange. So I am coloring it overall darker than I have done the above section. Uh, I will continue to add color to that here in just a second. This really turns out beautifully. I'm, I'm just delighted with it. Sometimes I do mess up a page and it's not really about uh, whether or not I've done it well or not. It's about how I save it. How do I save it? And that is the question that all of us have to ask ourselves. So far, with rare exception, I have found that there is no page that can't be saved. I just may not know how to do it yet. Okay, so now I'm just applying the same technique that I've used all over. Light water brush, you know, the handling of water brush, the pressure is not a lot. It's just, you just let the brush do the work. I do love the way a water brush works, especially with ink tints. It is just, you can see that it does not look like there's very much pigment on that page, but when you apply water to ink tents, it is amazing how pigmented they actually are and how much pigment is on the page. So if there is any advice that I can offer to new ink tents users, it's be light until you know what your pencils will do, and then you'll know when when to apply pressure and when not to because you can put an awful lot of pigment on the page in a big hurry if you are heavy-handed and you will end up with sort of solid blocky colors. There we go. That is the leaf finished. Uh, we will move on to the next flowers. And welcome back. It is a new day and I am about to start on the star flowers there, for lack of a better name for them. I do have in my hand the red violet and the fuchsia. So I'm starting with the red violet, which is, it's a dark purple, but it leans more to the red side, matches this fuchsia beautifully. This particular one is going to be more purple. The other one is going to be slightly more pink but uh, I thought that this was a good contrast uh, behind the bright orange uh, and gold gladiola, and indeed it does turn out looking beautiful. So I've just simply applied the darker color to the base of each of the blossoms and a little bit to the interior, a little bit up maybe one or two of the sides. I'm not being particularly fussy about it, just sort of adding in a little color, not really outlining, more trying to uh, show a little variegation of the colors and it turns out very well. Now these are going to be very solidly colored. Uh, they are variegated but they are, it's a little bit dark. I think that if I had to do it over again I might do it a little bit lighter. I know it doesn't look like very much pigment right now but trust me that is an awful lot of pigment I'm laying down on the page. But overall it's a very nice effect. Now I do end up leaving the background white on this one but that's because I have a plan for this uh, finished drawing digital. I do digitize some of my finished coloring work and use it in other products that I create for my fabric line, for uh, uh, tote bags that I do, for journals, things like that, other, th other pieces of work that feature the art that I draw. So I will be leaving the background white, uh, but otherwise I might consider doing a blue sky background, maybe a yellow background, working it down into yellows. You could do greens, you could do an abstract, you could bring out your stencils and stencil in a background. You could do all kinds of different things. So when you are coloring, do not be hesitant to add things. No matter who the artist is, you can add your own pieces, your own creativity. You can't, of course, add stuff and then sell it as your own, but you could certainly add it for the purpose of coloring. And now you're about to see how really dark these are and see how much a little bit of pigment really goes a long way. I do think that if I had it to do over again, I would do these slightly lighter, but in the end, it actually works out being quite nice. And the other one, the one over there by my left hand, I do a little bit more pink, so it is lighter. And you will see that as we move on to the, the leaves. I believe that I am about to start on the stem and for 
for this, I did choose two greens. I chose the felt green and I chose the hooker screen. In the end, I end up being sorry that I chose the hooker screen. The hooker screen is a little bit too blue and I didn't want it to be a blue green. I wanted it to be a yellow green. The way that I'm going to correct that, although I don't believe I captured it on this video, is I'm going to simply run golden yellow down the center of the stem and then wet it again. And the yellow will mix with the blue and once again turn it a yellow green, which is really what I was after. I did want to see what the hooker's green would do in this particular application and I didn't particularly care for it. So once again, it isn't always about getting it right the first time. It is about how to fix it. So now I'm back to my tried and true spring green and Ionian green and I'm going to do these little leaves very quickly. I do them pretty much the same way that I did the larger hydrangea leaves, just a little bit different. I see how I'm just putting a little bit of a spike on the edges of those center spines and that will make them look sufficiently different to be a different kind of leaf. I'm also being much much lighter with the application of the spring green so that the finish is overall lighter and therefore looks like a different variety of plant which is what I wanted. I also didn't put a great deal of detail in these because they are technically in the background. I wanted to keep the focal on the gladiola and on the hydrangea and on the butterfly and not necessarily lose a lot of time in those little leaves in the background. Now we get to do the fun part. I have to say that I am so thrilled with the way that this butterfly turns out. So I have in my hand the sun yellow, the cadmium yellow, the tangerine, and the burnt orange. And all together those are going to make the wings of my butterfly. I am going to start out with the burnt orange and just use it very lightly around the top of the outer edge of these. I am really winging it as I studied a photograph of a beautifully colored monarch butterfly for this. And I am thrilled to say that I capture it perfectly. was the burnt orange and now this is the tangerine. I'm really just being very light with it up there just at the top because I was surprised that they are primarily yellow. I did not realize that the monarch it's an orange illusion but they are primarily yellow. So now this is the cadmium that I'm about to go for, cadmium yellow, and I'm going to go all the way around, leave sort of a, a lighter center so I'm going all the way around the outer edges, around underneath the orange, and leaving that sort of center in the narrow spaces. I'm just using it down one side, and so now I'm adding that in. And then when you apply the water brush, it makes the most beautiful gradation, and it's just perfect. I, I'm probably biased because these are some of my favorite colors to work with, the oranges and the yellows, and I love apricots <laughs> and peaches. I love to color those, and now of course monarch butterflies, but the real creme de la creme comes later. It is a bit of work, but you'll get to see it, and it is just, I, I, I love the way that it turns out. So each one of these, of course, uh, is slightly different, and they are looking a little bit dark right now, but when they dry, they are just beautiful. I don't think that it is unusual for all of us when we have something that we color that we believe we did an especially good job on to uh, get a little happy about that. And uh, I don't color well yet, but I did color this butterfly. So the way I, the, exactly the way I wanted it. I was going to leave those white because uh, it's going to have black wings, uh, black edges, but then I decided that that was too much and that they really needed to be colored and there are two more right there at the bottom. Uh, when I drew this I did use a reference photo and although the 
wings are, they're not exactly the same as the original photograph as far as the markings go. They are my own interpretation, but I had it pictured as a blue butterfly. So coloring it yellow makes it a little different. So I am going to switch to a fine liner. These are my drawing pens. Uh, ultimately, I will get rid of that number five and I'll put a brush pen in my hand. But for now, the number five is ideal for getting around the tiny, tiny little circles that are in some of the edges. But what I really wanted it for was to do this body. So I've just left a little halo of white down the center of the thorax, leaving a little tiny sliver of white between the segments. And that will show up as a bit of a sheen, like it's shiny and captured by the light. And I do exactly the same thing on the tail. Now I'm going to start around these. Now this is a little tedious, getting around each of the circles. You don't have to do it. What you could do is color the entire thing black and then add the circles back with your white Posca or a, a glitter gel pen or something like that. I'm electing to go ahead and color around each one and the result is pretty spectacular. But you can do it however you like. You could color the entire thing in with a solid color and it would not be a problem. So however you want to do it, as you can see, and now I switched to the brush pen, I believe that I have a little more control with my brush pen and I like like it very well. Of course, it is a very comfortable tool for me to use since I am a primarily black and white ink artist. So having the black pen in my hand like that is very comfortable. When I do the wing, you'll notice the second wing. I'm going to leave just that tiny, tiny sliver of white between those two wings. And that is to show that they are in fact two distinct wings. that you have enjoyed the demonstration of coloring the different types of flowers using Derwin ink tints along with the fine liner and that you will try this yourself in my book or another book that has flowers. This technique can be applied to just about anything. Hi everybody, it's Christine and I'm coming back to you in real time with the finish here. I did use the Cali Art Marker GG01 and my Zier glitter pens uh, to do a frame around this just very quickly. And with my little helper coriander, I do want to say that the entirety of this video has been filmed in these early days of our global pandemic around COVID-19. Um, while this does not affect my life particularly in that I have already practiced social isolation, being an artist, I do know that it uh, adversely affects a large number of you. So I do wish you courage and strength and fortitude. Uh, this crisis will pass. Uh, life will resume some sort of normality for all of us, hopefully soon. And until that happens, and until we meet again, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody.